In the sprawling, infinitely improbable expanse of the galaxy, there are certain certainties that one can count on. Stars will shine, black holes will consume, and humans, by their very nature, will chase after anything that even remotely resembles a thrill. It was this last truth that led to the rather unconventional partnership of Dirk Thompson, an Earth-born thrill-seeker with a penchant for the impossible, and Xylena, an iridescent, four-limbed beauty from the distant planet of Ferrolith, a world where the inhabitants had long since evolved past the need for physical interaction of any sort. This is not to say that the Ferrolithians were prudish or indifferent to the pleasures of the flesh. On the contrary, they found them fascinating in the way one might find a particularly outdated cookbook intriguing, curious, nostalgic, but ultimately unnecessary. Procreation for the Ferrolithians was a simple matter of mental compatibility, two minds melding in a moment of pure telepathic ecstasy, resulting in the creation of a new life form, fully formed and ready to contribute to society without the mess and bother of diapers, adolescence, or awkward conversations about the birds and the bees. Dirk, on the other hand, was decidedly old school. Born and raised in the post-expansion era of Earth, where humanity had become somewhat desensitized to the wonders of the universe, he had always sought out the next big thrill, the next uncharted territory. He had climbed the acid waterfalls of Xylo-7, wrestled with the gravitational anomalies of Thraxis Prime, and even dabbled in the art of zero-gravity tango on a space station in the Andromeda Cluster. But when he met Xylena, with her shimmering skin that shifted colors with her moods and her eyes that seemed to look straight into his soul, he knew he'd found something, or rather, someone, truly unique. Their relationship, if it could be called that, began in the most unlikely of places, a small, out-of-the-way bar on the edge of the Andromeda Cluster, where the drinks were as strong as the gravitational pull of a neutron star and the patrons were just as dense. Dirk had been nursing a particularly nasty concoction known as a black hole slammer when Zelina had gracefully settled onto the stool next to him, her very presence causing the drink in his hand to bubble and fizz in response to her telepathic aura. You're Dirk Thompson, she had stated, her voice resonating directly in his mind, bypassing his ears entirely. The human who thinks he can experience everything the universe has to offer. Dirk had grinned, downing the rest of his drink in one go. That's me. And you are? Xylena of Ferrolith, she had replied, her skin shifting from a deep sapphire to a shade of violet that suggested curiosity. I've heard of your exploits. Fascinating for a human. Fascinating? I'll take that as a compliment, Dirk had said, his grin widening. So, what brings you to this corner of the galaxy? Looking for a thrill? Zelina had tilted her head slightly, a gesture that Dirk would later learn indicated amusement. In a manner of speaking, I'm here to study humans, specifically your obsession with physicality. Physicality? Dirk had echoed, raising an eyebrow. You mean sex? Zelina had clarified, her tone as clinical as a scientist dissecting an earthworm. Among my people, reproduction is a mental process. We find the idea of physical procreation quaint, but intriguing. I wish to understand it better. Dirk had nearly choked on the remnants of his drink. You want to understand sex? Yes, Zelina had replied, her skin now a shade of green that Dirk would later learn signified determination and I believe you, of all people, might be the perfect candidate to assist me in this endeavour. And so, the unlikely duo had set off on a journey that would take them across the galaxy and beyond, all in the name of scientific discovery, or so Xylena claimed. For Dirk, it was an opportunity to experience something truly out of this world, literally and figuratively. Their adventure began on Earth, where Dirk attempted to introduce Zelina to the basics of human intimacy. It did not go well. Zelina, despite her best efforts, found the whole process bewildering and, frankly, 
a little messy. I don't understand, she had said after their first awkward attempt. How do you derive pleasure from this? It's so inefficient. Dirk, ever the optimist, had merely shrugged. It's not about efficiency. It's about the experience, the connection, the chemistry. Chemistry, Silena had echoed her skin, shifting to a shade of perplexed turquoise. I've studied human chemistry, and nothing about it suggests that this inefficient process should be enjoyable. Dirk chuckled, leaning back against the headboard of his bed, his hair tousled and his grin as wide as ever. It's not that kind of chemistry, Zelina. It's more intangible. It's about the spark between two people, the way their bodies and minds react to each other. It's about losing yourself in the moment and finding something more. More? Zelina repeated, her voice tinged with scepticism. I fail to see how this amour can emerge from such a primal act. It seems to me that your species has complicated a process that could be far simpler. Dirk raised an eyebrow. And how would you simplify it? Zelina's skin shifted to a confident gold. Through telepathy, of course, a meeting of minds where thoughts, emotions and desires are shared directly and wholly. No need for physical exertion, no need for fluids, just pure connection, unfiltered and immediate. Dirk considered this, his curiosity piqued. I've heard about your telepathic procreation, but you're saying it's more than just a mental exchange. It's pleasurable? Zelina's eyes gleamed with a hint of mischief, a rare emotion for her species. More than you can imagine. It's an experience that transcends the physical, a merging of consciousness where two beings become one in a way that your kind could never achieve through mere physicality. Dirk's grin returned, but this time it was tinged with a challenge. That sounds like a bold claim. How about you show me? Let's try it your way. Zelina's skin turned a shade of wary grey. It's not that simple, Dirk. Telepathic procreation requires a deep mental connection, one that can be overwhelming for those unprepared. It's not something to be taken lightly. Dirk's eyes sparkled with determination. I've never taken anything lightly in my life. Besides, I'm curious. I want to understand your way, just like you wanted to understand mine. Zelina hesitated, her mind racing through the possibilities. She had underestimated Dirk's resolve, thinking the complexity of telepathic procreation would deter him. But she should have known better. Humans were nothing if not relentless in their pursuit of new experiences. Finally, her skin settled into a shade of soft lavender, signalling her decision. Very well, Dirk, but if we're going to attempt this, we need to do it properly. We'll have to go to Ferilith, to my home world. The environment there will be more conducive to the process, and my parents, well, they'll need to be informed. Zelina, hoping that mentioning the parents would do the trick, as she did not want him to experience the fatal world she lived on, well, not so soon anyway, and wanted to make changes on Earth to how humans procreate, as it was usually all over after only two pumps of the joystick while gaming. But if asked to show him her homeworld, she was honor-bound to do so, as her species also needed to feed and gain energy. Dirk blinked in surprise. Your parents? You're bringing me home to meet your parents? Zelina's skin flickered with a mix of embarrassment and resolve. Telepathic procreation is a significant event in our culture, it's customary for one's family to be involved, to offer guidance and support. Besides, they'll want to meet the human who's so determined to explore our ways. Dirk chuckled, rubbing the back of his neck. Well, this is turning out to be more of an adventure than I expected, but I'm in. Let's do it. And so with that, the unlikely pair boarded Dirk's trusty, if somewhat battered ship, the asterisk galactic wanderer asterisk, and set course for Ferilith. The journey was relatively uneventful, save for a brief encounter with a rogue asteroid field and a particularly persistent space salesman trying to hawk intergalactic insurance. But Dirk's mind was preoccupied, his thoughts swirling with anticipation and curiosity about what awaited him on Zelina's homeworld.
When they finally arrived at Ferilith, Dirk was taken aback by the sheer beauty of the planet. It was a world of shimmering colors and ethereal landscapes, where the air itself seemed to hum with a quiet, gentle melody. The cities were sleek and organic, built into the natural curves of the land, and the inhabitants moved with a grace and fluidity that made Dirk feel clumsy by comparison. Zelina led him to her family's abode, a structure that seemed to grow out of the ground itself, its walls pulsing with a soft, bioluminescent glow. As they entered, Dirk was greeted by Zelina's parents, two beings who exuded a calm, serene presence. Their skin colors shifted in sync, a sign of their deep connection. Mother, father, Zelina began, her voice resonating with respect. This is Dirk Thompson, the human I told you about. Dirk gave a polite nod, unsure of the proper etiquette in this situation. Dirk stood awkwardly in the softly glowing entryway of Zelina's family home, trying to suppress the growing sense of unease gnawing at the edges of his consciousness. The Ferrolithians were eerily calm, their skin a serene shade of aquamarine that radiated a disconcerting sense of peace. Zelina's parents, whom she had introduced as Lysath and Arena, regarded him with an intensity that to his human sensibilities felt just a bit too probing. Welcome, Dirk Thompson, Lysath intoned, his voice resonating directly in Dirk's mind, bypassing his ears entirely. We are honored that you have chosen to explore our ways. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Dirk replied, trying to keep his tone casual. This is all pretty incredible. Arena's skin shimmered with what Dirk assumed was approval. Zelina has spoken highly of your curiosity and bravery. It is rare for an outsider to be so open to our customs. Dirk smiled, but it felt strained. I've always believed in experiencing everything the universe has to offer, no matter how different or strange. Indeed, Lysath said, his tone almost imperceptibly shifting to something Dirk couldn't quite place. And that is why you are here. Zelina, who had been standing beside Dirk, glanced at him with an expression that he couldn't quite read. Her skin had settled into a deep, contemplative indigo, and for the first time since they met, Dirk thought he detected a hint of hesitation in her. Dirk! she said softly, her voice now carrying an unfamiliar weight. Before we proceed, you must understand that this experience will be unlike anything you've encountered. It will require more from you than you might expect. Dirk's curiosity flared, pushing aside the small voice in his head that whispered caution. I'm ready, Zelina. I've come this far, haven't I? Zelina's gaze lingered on him for a moment longer before she turned to her parents. We should begin. Lysath and Arena nodded in unison, their skins shifting to a shade of solemn gold. Follow us, Arena instructed, and the trio led Dirk through a series of winding corridors that seemed to pulse with a subtle rhythmic energy. The further they went, the more the architecture around them seemed to blend seamlessly with the natural world, as if the walls themselves were alive, breathing in sync with the planet. Finally, they arrived at a large circular chamber, bathed in a soft, ethereal light. The center of the room was dominated by a raised platform, its surface smooth and inviting. Dirk felt a strange pull toward it, as if something within him was being drawn to the energy that radiated from the platform. Please lie down, Selina instructed, her voice gentle but firm. Dirk hesitated for only a moment before complying, settling himself on the platform. As he did, he felt a wave of warmth wash over him, soothing and calming his nerves. Whatever this experience was, it was already unlike anything he had ever felt. Zelina, Lysath, and Arena positioned themselves around him, their eyes closing as they began to hum in a low, melodic tone. The sound resonated in Dirk's chest, vibrating through his very bones, and he felt his consciousness begin to drift. Relax, Dirk, Zylina's voice echoed in his mind. Let go of your thoughts, your fears. Let us guide you. 
Dirk took a deep breath, allowing himself to sink deeper into the warmth that enveloped him. His mind began to blur, his thoughts becoming indistinct, like wisps of smoke in a gentle breeze. He felt something, an energy, begin to flow through him, connecting him to Zelina and her parents in a way that was both exhilarating and terrifying. But as the connection deepened, Dirk became aware of something else, a subtle, insidious drain on his vitality. It started as a slight tug at the edges of his consciousness, but quickly grew stronger, pulling at his life force with increasing intensity. Panic flared in his mind, and he tried to pull back, but found himself unable to move, his body paralyzed by the energy that now held him in its grip. Zelina, he called out, his voice trembling with fear. What's happening? Zelina's eyes opened, now glowing with an intense, otherworldly light. Her skin had shifted to a dark, regretful blue. I tried to warn you, Dirk, she said, her voice tinged with sorrow. But you were too eager, too determined to experience everything, no matter the cost. Dirk's heart pounded in his chest as the truth of her words began to sink in. What do you mean? What is this? This is how we sustain ourselves, Zelina explained, her voice resonating with an emotion Dirk couldn't quite place. Was it pity? Regret? Our species evolved beyond the need for physical sustenance long ago. We no longer consume food or other resources the way your kind does. Instead, we draw energy from other beings, drain their life force, if you will. It's the purest form of sustenance and the most efficient. Dirk's mind reeled as he tried to process her words. The warmth that had initially enveloped him now felt like a constricting cocoon, tightening around him, squeezing the very essence of his being. He could feel his strength ebbing away, his vitality slipping through his fingers like sand. You're killing me, Dirk croaked, his voice weak and barely above a whisper. Zelina's skin flickered with a shade of deep, mournful violet. I didn't want it to come to this, Dirk. I genuinely enjoyed our time together. I was fascinated by your curiosity, your relentless pursuit of new experiences. But you were so determined to know our ways, so insistent on pushing the boundaries. I tried to warn you, to give you a way out, but you wouldn't listen. Dirk's thoughts raced, desperately searching for a way to escape, to break free from the invisible grip that held him. But his body refused to obey, his muscles limp and unresponsive. Please, he gasped, his vision beginning to blur as his energy continued to drain away. Don't do this. Zelina's expression softened, and for a moment Dirk thought he saw genuine sorrow in her eyes. It's not too late, Dirk. I can still save you. I can reverse the process, send you back to Earth. But you must decide now. Do you want to return, or will you embrace this final, ultimate experience? Dirk's mind struggled to focus, to weigh the choice before him. The pull of the energy drain was almost seductive now, lulling him into a state of near acceptance. A part of him, the part that had always craved the next thrill, the next adventure, whispered that this was the ultimate experience, the final frontier. To merge with the Ferrolithians, to become one with them in a way that no human ever had, was a temptation unlike any other. But another part of him, the part that had once been a wide-eyed kid staring up at the stars, dreaming of the endless possibilities they held, fought against the pull. He didn't want to die, not like this, not as a mere fuel source for an alien race. There was still so much to see, so much to do. He hadn't even scratched the surface of what the universe had to offer. With a monumental effort, Dirk forced his thoughts into clarity, focusing on the image of Earth, of the life he would leave behind. I... I want to live, he whispered, the words barely audible. Zelina nodded, her skin shifting to a soft, relieved green. Very well, Dirk, I will honor your choice. She closed her eyes, and the humming that had filled the chamber began to shift in tone, becoming softer, more soothing. Dirk felt the energy that had been draining from him begin to reverse, flowing back into his body, filling him with a warmth that was now comforting rather than suffocating.
His strength slowly returned, his muscles regaining their responsiveness. After what felt like an eternity, Dirk was able to sit up, his body trembling from the ordeal. He looked at Zelina, who was now watching him with a mixture of sadness and something akin to admiration. You're letting me go? Dirk asked, his voice shaky. Zelina nodded. I am. You've shown a resilience that few possess, Dirk. And while I can't fully understand your species' obsession with life, I respect it. You've earned the right to continue your journey. Lysath and Arena, who had remained silent throughout the exchange, finally spoke, their voices merging into a harmonious chorus. You are free to leave, Dirk Thompson, but know this, our paths will likely never cross again. The knowledge you've gained here is yours alone, a rare glimpse into our world that few will ever experience. Dirk nodded, still trying to process everything that had happened. Thank you, he managed to say, though the words felt inadequate. Xylena stepped forward, her skin now a soft, reflective silver. Goodbye, Dirk. I hope you find the experiences you seek, wherever they may be. With that, she extended her hand, and Dirk took it, feeling a final pulse of energy pass between them, a connection, fleeting yet profound. Then, without another word, Zelina turned and led him out of the chamber, back through the winding corridors and to the awaiting ship. Be careful of other alien girls in the future, Dirk. Let this be a warning to humans. Not all is as it seems, Zelina said with a condescending voice. Dirk, still stunned by the experience, let out a spray of words. Get stuffed, you fairy tale alien succubus. I do want I want. Thanks for nothing but a headache. This has to be the worst alien female date I have ever been on. Oh, and by the way, I will be putting up a warning poster at the bar, giving your species a two out of ten score for fun alien times, and I hope your race of succubus aliens shrivel up and die and never get to touch another human again. May we never meet again. Zeline was left with her mouth wide open, thinking to herself, Damn it, should have taught that ungrateful bastard a lesson.